Today we're making a paper press and embossing the Get Hands Dirty logo on some handmade notebooks. Boom! This video is sponsored by Inventables and Squarespace and I'll tell you about that in the end of the video. First thing I did was to carve the Get Hands Dirty logo and see if the pieces matched. So I opened both versions of the logo on Adobe Illustrator and made one of them slightly bigger than the other so that the counter dies can match. Save it as an SVG file and then open on Easel, which is the free software from Inventables. Rescale them and combine the parts so that I don't lose any letter when moving them around. I made both parts on Carvey, one of my 3D carving machines, and the material used is called Corian. It's a fairly hard plastic. Here I was changing to a 30 degree solid carbide V-bit to make all the tiny details. So I selected a detail pass and waited for Carvey to do its work. Now that I know that it works, I'm carving the female part out of brass because with Corian the centers of the letters A, D and R broke so I really needed a harder material to achieve better results. Something I've been noticing is that the first pass always seems to plunge deeper into the material regardless of what I set up on easel. I couldn't allow that to happen with brass because I could break the bit really quickly, so after reading some Inventables forum threads, I followed the suggestion to place some paper sheets under a piece that is placed near the smart clamp and then place the workpiece somewhere else in the wasteboard. This way we are tricking the machine. I also applied a few drops of alcohol over the surface just in case it helps to keep the bit cool. Brass is not on the list, so I chose aluminum that seemed to be the closest material and kept all the default super slow and super shallow settings. It took about two and a half hours to carve. I could probably go a little faster, but I only had this bit, so I was afraid to break it. At some point I heard some strong noise and ran to see what happened, but it seemed all okay, so I let it continue. Now that I have both matching parts, I need to start making the press. I searched a lot and found an example that seems super easy and interesting. This design is from an artist called David Andre, and I pretty much followed the pictures in order to achieve a similar result. I went to my local hardware and metal store to get some springs and some steel angle and bar. The base is all made out of hard maple. Sorry about my hair. I glued and screwed all the pieces together to create a solid base structure and started drilling some holes in the metal to connect with the wood pieces.
I sanded and filed the ends a little bit and applied a clear finish to protect the steel from rusting. I thought about using some color, but then I just went with a natural look. I thought it was okay to make a thin pilot hole and drive these fat boys, but the wood split and I clearly needed to make rather large holes before driving the lag bolts. What? What the I even broke it when unscrewing it. It's hard maple, right? Because I'm still afraid of scratching my new workbench surface, I stick some felt pads underneath. These are the horizontal panels that will smash whatever I place in between. On the top one, I drill some holes to apply a wood insert nut on each corner. I shortened four eye bolts and folded the ends of all the springs to make it easier to hook to the press. I actually didn't know how to do this, so I messaged my friend Carlos from Cactus Workshop and he told me I needed to hit it up. I realized that the springs were not doing much and went ahead and cut them to enhance the spring effect. These little blocks will keep the top surface on track when it's moving up and down and keep it reasonably parallel with the bottom surface. I finally attached the bottom board in place and traced the contour of the bottle jack base 
so I can visually keep it in the middle. Okay, cool. So it seems to be working really well and now let's place the embossing pieces correctly in the press. I used double sided tape and it hold it up really well. After making a bunch of tests I finally got it right. So I made a corner stop to lean the paper against and started embossing the notebook covers. I always place two pieces of cardstock on the back of the paper to prevent the corners around the logo square to wrinkle. You will see Carolina from Massimo bookbinding the notebooks by hand in a moment, but first let me tell you about one of the sponsors of this video, that is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can get unique domains and allow you to create beautiful online stores and websites to make your next move. I switched my website to Squarespace a couple months ago and I really like it. It's super simple to work with, they have tons of award-winning templates that look amazing and very contemporary and you don't need to know any coding. Everything is drag and drop, very visual and they provide award-winning 24 on 7 customer support. So get ready to make your next move and go to squarespace.com slash gethandsdirty to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. We are making two batches of these notebooks, one is already available and the next one will be released in two weeks, so grab them quickly before they are gone. Please take a look on Get Hands Dirty Shop, your support is pretty much appreciated. Okay, so now let's watch this special edition of Massimus being made. A big shout out to Squarespace, Inventables and all my Patreon supporters. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you found this project interesting. The press can be used in different ways and I think I'll make something different with it on another video. Alright, I'll catch you later. <laughs>